Why's the contractor got to mess around with attic ventilation? Why can't he just put the shingles on the roof and move on and be done? Because if you skip attic ventilation, it could contribute to problems in the attic and in the living space. Specifically, heat buildup in the summer, moisture buildup in the winter, and in climates routinely pelted with snow and ice, ice dams. Let's look at these problems a little closer. Heat buildup. Radiant heat from the sun bakes on the roof. This heat then radiates into the attic space. If we don't get it out of the attic properly, it can radiate below into the living space. That could affect the comfort level inside the house. Any appliances that are running might have to work a little bit harder. That could affect utility bills. Meanwhile, up on the roof, we could be looking at premature shingle deterioration all because of heat buildup. Let's change gears. The season we're in right now. I recognize a lot of faces. Thank you for coming back. I'm going to ask the veterans to take a back seat, please, for a minute. Anybody who has not been here before have an idea? How many gallons a day does the average family of four generate in water vapor in the winter? just by occupying the house. Two to four, two to four gallons from these activities, cooking, cleaning, doing laundry, over a gallon a day from breathing and perspiration. Other factors that we're not even showing you on the screen, pets, plants, hang drying wet clothes indoors, storing firewood inside a house. This all generates water vapor. Where does it go? Well, some of it rises to a cooler, drier place, the attic. And if we don't get it out of the attic properly, potentially it'll condense as frost or water droplets drip onto the insulation. That could affect the R value, the efficiency of the insulation. In time, we might be looking at mold, mildew, wood rot, indoor air quality could be affected. Folks, if we want the attic ventilation system to tackle heat and moisture, the system better be balanced. Here's what we mean by a balanced ventilation system. 50% of the air is incoming, intake, low on the roof. The other 50% is leaving the attic, high exhaust. 50-50. That's a balanced system. Companies that make vents drop their products into two massive bucket buckets. The vent either has a motor or it does not. If it does not have a motor, the maker calls it net free area. I'll let you read it for yourself. It's usually measured in square inches. This is a cut piece of our flagship product, Shingle Vent 2 Ridge Vent. We rate this, we specify this, at 18 square inches of NFA per linear foot. That's our claim. What we're really telling the Chicago area contractor, every physical foot of this vent, you've got 18 clear and free inches through which air can go through it. You put a motor on that vent, well now you're talking CFM cubic feet of air moved per minute. Let's go over the types of exhaust vents on the street. Not by brand, by grouping. Ladies and gentlemen, there's five, and only five, types of exhaust vents on the street. Here they are. Type one, box vents, hat vents, turtleback vents, can vents, we call them roof louvers. Category number two, turbines. It's a tall box vent that spins. That's all it is. And if it's not spinning, it's just a tall box vent. Category three, gable louvers. You're looking at the bottom of the exhaust vent barrel. <laughs> gable louvers. Folks, we make these. That's not going to keep us from being candid when the time's right. Now's a good time. The problem with gable louvers is their location. 
You got one on this end of the house, one on this end of the house. They don't draw very well from the center of the attic. They do not. Power fans, roof mount power fans, gable mount power fans. They both use power, electricity, to operate. The good thing about a power fan, because it has at least a thermostat control, it turns on whenever we need it to. As the heat rises and reaches the thermostat setting, that kicks on the motor and it begins to ventilate for us. If it also has the humidistat control, it helps to tackle the two to four gallons, sometimes six, uh, that in water vapor that the average family of four generates by occupying the house. Without that feature, the only thing turning on a power fan 12 months out of the year is heat buildup. It will not tackle moisture. Then there are solar powered fans, gable mount, roof mount. Unlike traditional fans, these use the sun and the solar panel to power the motor. There's no electrical hookup required, no electrical cost to the homeowner. Finally, the fifth and final category of exhaust, we save the best for last. Ridge vents. Rigid molded four foot stick ridge vents, like shingle vent two. Continuous rolled ridge vents, like peak performer. Ladies and gentlemen, if everything else about two different projects is the same and the, contract, and the contractor could use a ridge vent or pick one of the other four groups of exhaust vents we just reviewed, we think he'd be foolish to not pick a ridge vent if everything else about the project is the same. It's the optimum exhaust vent, hands down, and we underlined the keyword in bullet point two. We're going to get a continuous flow of air from low on the roof deck to high on the roof deck along the entire horizontal peak of the roof deck. Folks, we're installing this thing end to end on the roof. We balance it down low with good intake, no dead spots, no airflow gaps, gable louvers, box vents, fans, turbines. The other four groups, they can't make that claim. They cannot. Bottom of the screen, we're going to get more NFA out of a typical ridge vent application than we're going to get from any other type of non-motorized exhaust vent. What does that mean, Paul? Well, it means this. It'll take five wind turbines, 15 can vents, to match what 42 feet of ridge vent cranks out on the same roof. Folks, you're looking at roughly, roughly a 1,500 square foot attic. It's got 42 feet of available ridge. The Chicago roofer puts 42 feet of ridge vent up there, which is what we would recommend to him if he asked. Somebody else has to swing by with their saw and start cutting five turbine holes, or God forbid, 15 can van openings. Would you kindly table performance for a second? Can we set performance aside briefly? How attractive would 15 box vents look on a roof? Air moves through two primary forces. The first is the weaker of the two, thermal effect, thermal buoyancy. Warm air will naturally rise and exit out of a vent. Then there's wind. Wind is a much greater mover of air. When wind hits a house, it creates high pressure in yellow, low pressure in purple. High pressure can actually push air back into the exhaust vent. We don't want that. Low pressure purple can pull air out of the vent, enhancing the vent's performance. We want purple whenever we can get it. I'm going to show you right now how we can get purple frequently. Here's a ridge vent using no wind, just thermal buoyancy. Notice the warm air, the red arrows rise and exit through both 
sides of the vent. Fantastic. Now let's bring in some Windy City area wind and watch what happens to these arrows. Please remember, high pressure yellow, low pressure purple. Here comes that Chicago wind. Now when the wind blows, that yellow arrow that you see is incoming wind effect through the windward side of the ridge vent. Bad news. With that wind is whatever Mother Nature's carrying that very moment. Rain, snow, debris. This is an exhaust vent. But because of wind effect, part of it ingests on the windward side. But now, if we put a little wing on that vent, if we put a little lip on that vent, we call it, by the way, an external wind baffle, and you bring back that wind, now look what happens. The wind strikes the wing and deflects up and over, creating a pocket of purple, low pressure, above the windward and above the leeward side of the vent. Goodbye incoming yellow arrows, only red arrows exiting the vent. And that's what we want, folks, even when the wind blows. If I could ask the veterans to please take a back seat briefly. Anybody who has not been here before want to take a stab? I'm going out on a limb here, I know it. Who wants to take a stab at the name of the phenomenon going on behind me on the screen? It's the same phenomenon that gives lift to an airplane. Anybody want to take a, take a stab at the name? I'll go to a repeat veteran if I have to. Who wants to bail me out? My man in the back. Thank you very much. First name? Chris. Thank you, Chris. Bernoulli effect. The Bernoulli principle, named after a scientist many, many years ago. All that's happening, the wind rides the roof deck. That's what the wind does. It rides the roof deck. And at some point, it intersects the vent. Well, if the vent has the wing, the baffle, it deflects up and over, creating low pressure and enhancing its performance. There's a bonus taking place. Any weather being carried by the wind strikes the baffle and deflects away from the vent, away from the attic. Some people don't realize we make shingle vent in three different widths. Traditional 12 inches wide, very common across North America. Then we also make it 9 inches wide, 7 inches wide. Because some contractors out there are using specialty cap shingles. Cedar Shake, for example. They need a narrower ridge vent then. 12 wide, 9, 7. We also make it Class A rated for wildfire zones. 2010, in response to the request across North America, you got to give me something else, air vent, for chopped up roofs besides power fans. Not everybody out there likes power fans. What else you got for me for this roof that does not have very much horizontal run? What do you got? Hip ridge vent launched in 2010. You can put the ridge vent on the diagonals on the hips of the roof. Folks, it passed a rather challenging Miami-Dade County, Florida wind-driven rain test. I know we're in Illinois. What do we care about Florida? You should please care about it because it's the most difficult test today on the street. 1,200 gallons of wind-driven rain. 1,200. A buck 10 miles per hour wind. Three different roof pitches. Dimensional architectural shingle. We were not allowed to use sealant. It did not leak. It did not. We captured the vent, surviving that test, Miami-Dade, on camera. It's a pretty cool video. It's on our YouTube channel and our web. You know why this passes Miami-Dade County diagonally? And shingle vent doesn't stand a chance to pass that same test diagonally. Shingle vent, by the way, passes horizontally, but not diagonally. You know why this passes? You probably already eyeballed it. The gaskets. It's got two gaskets. If you touch those gaskets, they feel roughly like 
a windshield wiper. But unlike a windshield wiper, it's a fixed part, it's not moving. We are done with exhaust. We're done. It's time to address the other half of the balance system. Unfortunately, the often overlooked half of the system. Intake. Here are the types of intake vents on the street. Rectangular under eaves. The larger the rectangle, the more net free area you can expect. Category two, vented soffit, usually made by siding manufacturers. We have a strong word of caution. If you're using a siding panel to be a functioning intake vent, we chose those words on purpose. If you're using a ridge vent that yields 18 net free area per foot, it needs nine net free area per foot at the eave on each side of the house. Two nines equals 18. Most brands of vented soffit on the street only produce six NFA. Not every brand, most. At six, at an output of six, you need an 18 inch overhang with every single panel vented to get to nine. Category three, continuous soffit. Two inch wide strips, eight or 10 feet long, PVC or aluminum. The nice thing about continuous soffit, the number nine. Nine on the left of the house per foot, nine on the right of the house per foot, 18. You just balanced your ridge vent. Category four, vented drip edge. It combines a drip edge with built-in continuous soffit for homes with very little or no overhang. Finally, category five for intake, rooftop installed, the edge vent. Folks, this is now eight years old, the edge vent. And it was launched because we heard loud and clear from a group of contractors across the country, look, I know intake's important. I do. I agree. But I'm not comfortable standing on a ladder with a saw over my head cutting into a soffit. It's not my cup of tea. I'm a shingle guy. Keep me rooftop. You keep me rooftop, I'll think about intake. Until then, I'm not sure. Enough people said that to us. We took them seriously. So we launched our rooftop installed intake vent. You want off the ladder? We'll get you off the ladder. Stay on the roof and put this on the edge of the roof and shingle over it just like a ridge vent. But it's not a ridge vent, it's an intake vent. Here's the cool thing about the math behind a balanced system. I, I think it's kind of cool anyway. Two four foot sticks of the edge vent. Ladies and gentlemen, two of them equals one four foot stick of ridge vent, shingle vent two, because a pair of nine NFAs per foot equals 18 NFA per foot. I mean, we really tried to make the math for a balanced system, a piece of cake for the installer. Two sticks, one stick, two to one. Quick shortcut for you. You don't have time to roll through the math. You don't want to fumble for the app. You just want to give them a number and be gone. Bottom of the screen, red ink. Thanks to air vent engineering, divide by two. You take the attic square footage at the top of the project, whatever number that is, divide it by two. Immediately in square inches, that's how much exhaust you need. That's how much intake you need. 2,000 square foot attic divided by two is 1,000. It overestimates a little bit. That's okay. You're in the zone. You're done here. Go see your next client because you're rolling on. I want a power fan, Paul's Roofing. I don't want a non-motorized vent. Give me a fan. How'd you come up with the fan? I, I see the app. Show me the math. All right. Here's the math, homeowner. 2,000 square foot attic, you multiply by 0.7. Why 0.7? Where's that from? It's from the home ventilation 
Institute, homeowner. H V I, which has established an industry standard of 10 to 12 air exchanges every hour. That's our goal. You multiply by 0.7, you get those exchanges. You need a 1400 square foot, uh, sorry, CFM fan. S 1400. You're not going to find a 1400 fan in the air vent catalog. We don't make one. We pick this number on purpose. What do you do if you're looking for a CFM value and you can't find it anywhere? Come close. 1320, 1360, better yet, bump it up. Go higher. There's no problem going higher as long as we do the next critical step. You gotta give the fan, chosen for the project, ample intake. Critical step, divide by 300. CFM divided by 300 equals intake needed. Get out of square feet, talk the maker's language, square inches, 672 square inches of intake, a fan at or around 1400. That's a nice segue, I believe, to the second most common mistake across North America. Coming in at number two, a close second to lack of intake is this. Mixing types of exhaust on the same roof above a common attic, we call this short circuiting of the ventilation system. Folks, a short while ago, we went over the five categories of exhaust. We're not gonna do it again, you remember them. We don't want any two of those five on the same roof above a common attic, no ifs, ands, or buts. The install sheet says don't do it. Building code <laughs> says follow the install sheet. Here's why. Air follows the path of least resistance. It wants to come in point A, low on the roof, do its ventilation duties, and exit high exhaust and not be interrupted along the way. You put box vents in between a ridge vent and a soffit vent, it short circuits the system. I'd like to visit the slot cut for the hip ridge vent, please, because it's very different than a traditional horizontal ridge vent. First of all, let's say it's a 20 foot hip, 20 foot diagonal. You don't cut beyond the 10 foot mark, the midpoint. You don't take your saw beyond the midpoint. Run the product to 20 feet for cosmetics. Stop your cutting at the halfway point. Secondly, it's not a continuous 10 foot cut. It's gotta be intermittent. You cut some deck, you leave some uncut. You cut, you don't. Bullet point one, keeps the vent from becoming an intake vent on itself. The further you go down that hip, you risk it becoming an intake vent. Bullet point two is a code requirement for structural integrity. You can't just hack at a hip and cut a continuous slot, you can't. It'll potentially weaken the deck. I'd like to point out the most important step of the whole process right now on the screen. Climate appropriate underlayment under the vent and then over the vent. I grew up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, born and raised. I now call Dallas my home when Ervin hired me in 96. In Philly, Chicago, we're using a water protective membrane. Dallas, they're using a 30 pound felt. The point is, Whatever is climate appropriate the day of the job. We want that material under the vent. That deck can't be bare. Don't leave that deck bare. Under the vent, repeat it over the vent. Sandwich the thing. How wide do you cut the slot for a ridge vent? How wide? Ridge pole construction, ridge board, 
You're dealing with a center beam. Three quarters of an inch on each side of the ridge pole. After we clear the width of the pole, you got to clear the width of the board first. Clear it, extend it three quarters of an inch on each side. Truss construction, meaning there's no board, inch and a half wide slot, inch and a half. By the way, an inch and a half wide slot over the distance of one linear foot, in other words, 1.5 times 12 equals 18. That's where the vent gets its net free area. We emphasize that because we keep getting asked, believe it or not, will I give my vent a net free area boost with a gigantic slot cut? No. You will never get more than 18. Never. The vent maxes out at 18, no matter how wide you go with the slot. You'll get less than 18 if you cheat the slot. You'll never get more. What you will get, potentially, if you go more with your slot, weather infiltration. Surely somebody out there is doing it right, they're not the cheapest price, and they're getting their price. There's got to be people out there doing it. So we interviewed, we went on a hunt, and we interviewed contractors across North America. Here are a collection of tips from people who are kind of high priced and they get their fair asking price because they take the time to educate the homeowner like Jeff does. You tell the homeowner how you're going to attack the project, what products you're going to be using, and you establish some credibility. And then they're more willing to pay your fair asking price. And the next time the homeowner says, whoa, I've lived here 25 years and I've never had balanced ventilation. And now you swing by and you're telling me I need balanced ventilation? No. No, I don't think so, Paul's Roofing. Hey, I've got five bids on the kitchen table. Five. Why is only yours talking about balanced ventilation? What about the other four companies? Face to face, roofer, homeowner. It's go time. Simplify an explanation like short circuiting with a visual. I love this. This is from Sam Rosario in Boston. Homeowner, I'd love to sell you a ridge vent. I'd love to. But until you let me block off your pre existing box vents, you're not getting a ridge vent from me because you're short circuiting. You got a soft drink straw in your hand. One end of your soft drink is about to be in your Coke glass. The other end of the straws are going to be in your mouth. Before you take your sip of Coke, let me pop a pinhole halfway up your straw. Now take your sip of Coke. It doesn't work as well. The box vents on a roof between soffit and ridge vents are the pinhole in the system. We were asked to put in the writing five things homeowners should know about attic ventilation. So it's not the roofer saying it. It's another party saying it. We're going to give this to you on your way out. Included in this, hey, homeowner, stop bugging your contractor to mix two different types of exhaust vents on the same roof above a common attic. Would you kindly back off? That is in this brochure. We'll give it to you on your way out. Hopkit. Hopkit stands for home owner presentation kit. It's basically a shoe box with a mini block sample. It's a good chance for the homeowner to touch and see the vent up close. If you're feeling energetic at the time, maybe take a stab at the Bernoulli effect and the external baffle. It's up to you. And inside there's a leave behind brochure for the homeowner to read on their own time. Hop kit. Contractor Locator is a free tool on the web where you can be matched with homeowners looking for assistance with projects. You've got two ways to get your name on the Contractor Locator, and it's free. The first is 
self-help. We don't police it. Just go to the link, add your company information. Or in about 15 minutes, when we pass out the feedback forms, answer yes to question two, which asks, would you like to be added to the contractor locator? Click yes, check yes, we'll add you.